Hi, I'm Jimmy Whitelaw with the Nashville Demo Studio. Today I wanted to talk to you about film and television and uh, how you can get your music placed in film and TV. You know, outside of pitching to artists and record labels and publishers, um, there's a whole world of opportunity out there for you to be making money with your music um, in the interim of pitching uh, to labels and artists and, and publishers. And that world is the world of film and TV. Um, I'm sure most of you have watched uh, a movie or a TV show and heard music playing in the background or uh, coming in and out of scenes or you know uh, when the credits are rolling you'll hear a song that that you don't recognize. Uh, the reason why you don't recognize a lot of that music is because it's not necessarily music that's been commercially released. A lot of it is music that was been written and recorded by people just like you and me um, and all of that pays most of it does. Um, we'll talk about how you get paid for stuff like that but the first thing I wanted to do was talk about um, and I have notes here so I don't forget uh, any of the uh, the information I wanted to share with you but uh, there's three ways really three main ways that I think that you would get your music into film and television. The first way would be to go through a music supervisor and what they do, their role in the whole production team is to find music that the director is going to like for the scene uh, and, and place it into uh, the, the film that they're working on or the television show they're working on. Um, and their job is to look at the scene, look at the emotion of the scene and find music that's going to fit the scene that's going to, you know, complete it. Um, it. It would be really weird to watch a TV show with no music in the background, don't you think? So their their job in the production team um, is really important. So you could go directly to the music supervisor, which is a little difficult because it's, it's a lot like any industry, um, any sect of the music industry where you know you you gotta know somebody you gotta kinda network to those people uh... if you don't know any music supervisors one way to meet one um, would be if you know anybody that's currently placing their their music into film and television uh... if they want to share that information with you and give you an introduction then that's a great way to network yourself to a music supervisor and uh... get permission to pitch songs uh... F for what they're currently sourcing um, another great avenue would be to go through music production libraries and what they are is they're companies that work with music supervisors um, that work, to work with film and television production teams. What they do is they kind of do a lot of the legwork for music supervisors in that um, they gather songs. They have catalogs of thousands of songs um, in different genres, uh, instrumentals, world music, country music, pop music, anything you can think of. Um, those music production libraries collect the songs and they make them accessible to music supervisors. Um, <clears throat> a, w a good way to get into a music production library, or, there's many of them on the internet. You can Google uh, production music library or music production library uh, and <clears throat> you'll find some. A lot of them you can submit your music online to them. Um, now they're all going to review your music. Uh, they're going to see if it's up to snuff for their catalog. Uh, and then they'll decide if they want to include your music uh, in their catalog and uh, if they do that then they have music supervisors that go to them and say hey I'm looking for a country song with a male vocal that's about uh, riding the range so they'll go through their catalog and find music that fits that and send that to the music supervisor uh, for consideration and getting that into the project that the music supervisor is working on. So music production libraries are really important. Um, it, they're a really great way to get your music into film and television and it's also a really good way um, for you to network to um, people that are working in the film and TV industry. So uh, again you can google those and uh, you'll find a whole bunch of them. So um, that's a good place to start. Another place that is absolutely incredibly important if you don't have any connections um, is Taxi. So um, Taxi does a lot of stuff. Now they, they're an independent a &R company. They pitch to labels and publishers and artists and they do all that. But one thing they do extraordinarily well is get music placed in a film and TV. And the reason that they're so good at it is they send out a listing to their members. It's a membership based company. Uh, you become a member, they send you a listing that says 
you know, ABC is looking for, you know, a song for a new pilot show, blah, 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 blah. And they send that out to their members. Their members then send in music directly to Taxi uh, that's specifically looking for what their, their listing is calling for. And, not, and a lot of times the music supervisors that are working on these production teams come into the taxi office and screen the music. So by going to taxi and, and using that service many, many times, you're pitching directly to the music supervisor. Um, <clears throat> and outside of that, they also work with Madison Avenue ad, ad agencies. Um, you know, whenever Coca-Cola or Campbell Soup or, you know, these big brands uh, put together an advertising campaign, they utilize music supervisors on their production teams um, in the ad agency to come up with music to fit those ads. Um, they pay really well, and uh, those ad agencies are now working with Taxi. So um, by becoming a member, again, if you have no contacts, it's a fantastic way to get your foot in the door and to start seeing a return on investment um, as far as your recordings go and anything that you're spending money on as far as recording your music. So, um, like I said, uh, and even if you do have some great contacts, I know a lot of composers and songwriters that are um, that are members of Taxi that are already successful and continue to use the service. So, not to make a Taxi commercial out of this, but um, they're a really great company and they and they do a lot of good uh, for for songwriters as far as getting their their songs cut and getting them into film and television. So it's Taxi.com. So check them out. Um, so let's talk about. If it, let's talk about um, what you're going to need to start. So <clears throat> when you start looking for film and television placements and, and getting your feet wet in that whole business, there's a couple of things that you need to make sure that you have before you ever contact a music supervisor, before you ever start Googling and trying to contact music production libraries. And that is, I'm going to go over them with you. Number one, the music. It has to be broadcast quality. Now, <clears throat> broadcast quality doesn't mean radio quality, but it certainly doesn't mean work tape either. Um, they want stuff that sounds amazing. They want professional recordings. So if you're making, you know, and there, there are some of you that are really good in your home studio and can make some really good sounding stuff, but here's a test. Sit in front of that TV, turn yourself around, and listen to the music that's being played underneath those scenes in, in TV shows on your TV. Listen to that. If the stuff you're making in your home studio is not, does not sound as professional quality as what you're hearing on TV, it's not good enough. So, <clears throat> as long as you can make professional sounding, good, clean recordings at home, you can, you can certainly use those. Those would be considered broadcast quality. If you're a client of mine, um, we definitely have broadcast quality. We make radio quality stuff here. So, uh, if you're using a professional recording studio, those um, those those recordings are definitely going to be good enough to place into film and television. But here's the here's the thing: if you're using a professional recording studio, you must own the master rights to your recordings. Now, master rights are different than your copyright. So. When you write a song, you know, and you copyright it, that means you and your co-writers, you own uh, the copyright of the song. You have ownership of the song. When you take that song to be recorded professionally into a recording studio with professional musicians and singers, nine times out of ten, that you do not own the masters to that. Um, you do when you record here at Nashville Demo Studio. Uh, everything we do is work for hire, so and we don't charge any additional fees for the master rights of your songs uh, in the contract that that you sign with us whenever we record material for you we have a master rights release form that's a work for hire acknowledgement that you get um, with your contract that you can use and you can use that uh, whenever you place your music into film and television uh, a lot of times actually all the time anytime you place film and uh, anytime you place one of your songs into film and television uh, whenever they go to clear it which means they're licensing the usage of that song in a TV or film for you, from you, um, they're going to require that you have proof that you own the masters of that recording. So make sure that if you're not using Nashville Demo Studio and you're using another studio with different musicians and singers, that you have a master rights release form. That's very important because you absolutely cannot place your stuff into film and television unless you own the master. So, <clears throat> 
going back to the music, the actual recording of it really quick, um, there's, there's just a couple things that you should make sure you have. Um, the first thing I always tell people is make sure that you have the different mixes. So you're going to have a full mix, which is the mix that you get from the studio, which would, has everything in it. Um, then have an instrumental mix. If it's a song that has vocals on it, make sure you have a version of that that's just the instrumental. And then I always say to go ahead and make sure you have what's called a TV track. Um, it's everything but the lead vocal. The, backgrounds are, the background vocals are still in there, all the instruments in there, but uh, everything minus the lead vocal, that's always good to have. Uh, when you record with us, you always have, you know, we do that for free. You always get three mixes of your song, a full mix, an instrumental track, and a TV track. So um, just make sure you have those. Sometimes they'll never ask for them, but it's always good to have them in your back pocket because a lot of times they will ask for them. So, um, <clears throat> and then also, um, I always make sure I have different snippet clips of my songs. So you want to make sure, and you can do this, you don't have to use a recording studio for this. Once you have your song recorded, you can throw it in GarageBand or Acid or any type of um, audio editing software that comes on your computer. Make a 90 second clip, a 60 second clip, and a 30 second clip of the song. Because a lot of times that they may ask for them. So and that, again, that's always good to have. Another thing that's really good to have, just in case, is to have a DVD uh, or just get the session files. Uh, you know, most professional recording studios use Pro Tools, so you can always ask the recording studio to give you um, a DVD of your session, and it's not a video, it's just, it's, the WAV files, uh, the, the session files are really large, so typically they won't, they all won't fit on a CD, so we burn them on a DVD. Uh, for us, we have an FTP site that we'll upload your session files on, that you can download and just keep for your records. Um, we don't charge any additional fee for that. Mm, a lot of other studios do in the hundreds of dollars. So, um, it, again, if you record with us, you're, you know that option is always available to you for free that you can have the session files. Um, I want to talk about. So those are the things. First of all, those are the the two big things you want to make sure that you have in your pocket um, before you ever pitch to film and television, uh, to music supervisors, to taxi, or to music production libraries. Um, but you know, again. Before you pitch, and this is the reason I wanted to do this little film, is you really need to know everything that's involved because um, the world of film and television moves really, really quick. So there isn't time to ask a lot of questions uh, to a music supervisor or to uh, an admin agency that's trying to, to license your music or clear it um, for usage. So I want you guys to have a good grasp on how the whole process works, uh, what you'll need to know as far as contracts, as far as how you get paid and stuff. And we're going to talk about that now. So the first thing I want to talk about was, <clears throat> is uh, how things are licensed. So the first way would be if you're working with, directly with a music supervisor, um, you're going to be what's called licensing your music to them. What that means is you're giving them permission to use your song in their project. Um, and what clearing means is they have to clear it. They have to make sure that you own the master rights, that it's going, they're not going to run into any legal issues later if they use your song in film or television. So again, going back to those master rights, that's why it's really important that you have those. Um, music supervisors typically won't do their own admining of the license. They'll use an outside admin company, someone to do the paperwork because they're more involved in the creative side of it. So. Um, but that, that admin company will be who you're going to be negotiating your deal with and, and, and you know what you get in sync fees. We'll talk about that in a minute and etc. Um, but one thing that you do need to know is if you're going to work directly with music supervisors, you need to know how, what goes into those deals and you're going to be also be doing your own paperwork um, on your side of things, uh, if, even, if you, even if they use an admin company. Um, so that's with working with music supervisors, how they license it. You'll be working either directly with them or with an admin company. They'll send you a contract, uh, you'll look it over, you'll agree to it or not agree to it. Um, you'll agree to, you know, whatever is in there and, you know, what they're willing to pay you up front. Um, if they're going to give you mechanicals, etc. That'll all be in that paperwork that you'll need to sign off on.